Hello, hello, hello everybody and welcome to part two of the early game guide video. I do apologize it's taken this long to do part two, I just always end up streaming and I always tell myself I do need to make more guides and I do appreciate all you guys here over at YouTube that helped me grow, especially when New Frontier Pass was released, so I should make more, more guide videos and I will try and make more guide videos. Anyway, where did we leave off? We discussed scouting briefly, the double scout settler opener which we've stuck with here we've got our scout scouting looking for any potential goody huts neighbors uh barbarians we've got a warrior doing a little circle around the cap just so we've got a vision of any potential settles and again barb camps and goody huts we also talked about what civics we want to head for and we're going early empire for that governor title and yeah so let's crack on with part two before we start i just want to emphasize again this is a multiplayer guide and this is a sort of standard opener no no sort of um particular like holy site opener or harbor opener it's just a standard very basic um safe opener uh, not to die basically if you're quite new to multiplayer civ 6 um and yeah make sure you like the video if you like it follow me on YouTube, subscribe on YouTube, come follow me on Twitch, come say hi on Twitch. I have started streaming a little bit on YouTube just to see how it goes. And yeah, without sort of babbling on anymore, babbling on anymore, let's crack on with it. Okay, so here we are. I've grabbed the rollover. Uh, haven't moved anything or, or done anything though, so. We're ready to go here. We've got our scout coming out next turn. We decided to go on this 1-2 for the 2-2 base settle because it's on a plains hill. We've got our warrior here ready to escort it. Perfectly timed for the uh, escort just in case anyone wants to sort of get involved and uh, have a little settler steal. You do need to be extremely wary of that in, in multiplayer civ. There will be people that are going to snatch your settler. We also need to start thinking about where our second settler or our third city is going there's there's nothing really that's uh that's looking too great here at the moment we've got this potential ivory cell here but the the severe lack of two two towers around it makes it um a bit not a great choice really so we we will keep scouting with this guy to to see if we can find anything we've also found our neighbor here indonesia um amongst the desert when you find horrible terrain like desert and tundra you're kind of thinking okay maybe maybe i'm not going to get forward settled or anything here because no no one's going to be wanting to settle this horrendous terrain so do bear that in mind and apparently we've been hit by a violent storm as well uh do read these storms by the way because you can lose and gain stuff and you can see the direction it's heading like here at the moment we can see it's heading east so if we if we do move our scout over here, it's uh, it's got the risk of, of taking damage. So do bear that in mind. So we'll, we'll go up here just to avoid that. Also, when you're using the settler lens, um, you can you can see these loyalty numbers. The maximum is going to be minus twenty. So you can kind of guess where the the city of that loyalty is coming from. So we can kind of guess that Indonesia's got got a city around here because of these minus twenties. So let's crack on next turn no barbs around so we're not going to be uh trying to boost archery we're just heading straight for horses for that city strength so again uh it just sort of deters anyone from attacking us and we're heading to this 2-2 base here uh we can get a bit of vision down here with this guy we we haven't met anyone near here and we've we've got vision of, of quite a few tiles so we don't have to worry about that getting stolen carry on scouting with this guy and we found some juicy juicy tiles up here so we'll have to uh, keep an eye on that okay so we finished our scout we want to check what tiles are working now because obviously we were at pop four before that finishes and we've lost a pop from finishing the settler so um let's select the scout and see if we can get it down a turn by shifting the two two to the two one three we can't can we grow work in this yes we can so you might have thought, okay, I'll um, I'll work the two two because 
it's, it's a good mixture of food and growth. But as we can see here with a bit of tile management, we're, we're getting our growth slightly down to, to grow before the finish, the settler finishes so we don't lose any pop there. We'll also move this scout here onto the hill. We might as well. Uh, we're still not totally sure if we're away from that storm just yet. And let's go next turn. Okay, moving on towards the settler that we've got there. We'll carry on scouting up this river as well, find more potential settles, and we'll try and get some vision on Indo as well. Do keep using this settler lens. You, you don't know what you're going to find with it. It's it's super helpful. Just still trying to find the, uh, the the red sort of hexes that I've been discussing. Check our tiles quickly, see if that any uh, sort of stacked up production is going to bring that settler down a turn. And carrying on again. We'll meet these guys here now. Ready to settle there next turn. Another thing you can do if you're totally certain your settler isn't going to get stolen. Is you can fortify your warrior on the tile that you want to settle on. So no like barbs stands there or something like that. Always try if you're going to end on a tile. If, if you can land on a hill just for the extra vision. And we've also found what we're looking for, these, these red tiles. Even though we can't see Indonesia's city here, we know, we, we, we roughly know where it is because of this uh, too close to city or blocked by terrain tooltip here. So it's kind of a, a little mini map hack in a way uh, that you can, you can sort of find out where there's any potential civs or cities that you haven't met yet through that. So we know that these two tiles are, are four tiles away from, from the city centre because we can settle those two, but we can't settle the close ones. So we'll carry on uh, carry on scouting there. I shot an arrow into the Archery's done. Meet those guys there just in case again. Keep scouting up here. Keep pushing the four on the lens. And now we've got some vision here. We can sort, sort of start thinking about where we, where we want to settle here. And my first thought is either here or here. Now, this is a little bit closer. Uh, we're going to be working a 2-2 sooner. And we've got another 2-2 that we can buy into here. But I do like the look of the 2-2 base, uh, as we've previously discussed. Three cities in the early game on 2-2 base is, is going to be quite a lot of sort of exponential value for all you uh, mathematicians out there. We've also got this double lux here. We can immediately buy the 223 and that's going to pay for itself in uh, like eight, ten turns. So, yeah, I think we're going to sort of we're going to head up there. OK, so our gold is stacking up now and we've got a couple of options here. We can either buy ourselves a unit to escort here. We can buy ourselves a warrior if we need to. Another option we've got is to bring the scout back to meet the settler on the way there and buy a builder next turn because to be honest we do need to start getting this horse online so we can start accumulating horses so we can actually build one if we need to um i think in this scenario because my scout is actually super far away um i'm gonna buy a unit and just just do a builder next but we'll get to that when we uh when we get there we'll keep scouting here Oh, foreign trade boost. That's always handy early on in the game. Um, good, good tip for foreign trade boost. If you're sort of nearing, nearing the halfway mark and you still haven't found another continent, is to discuss with your map players. This is what makes multiplayer so much more fun, in my opinion, than single player. Is the sort of diplomacy that discussing with other players, uh, whether that be sort of working with them or, or working against them and sort of winding them up which I tend to enjoy so like if if we hadn't found a, a continent here we could have said in Indonesia if we found another continent she say yeah just go northeast or whatever with your scout um, so yeah let's carry on next turn we're settling next turn as well settle nice and quick in case someone we haven't met here is is going to decide to block us and we'll carry on trying to look for that barb camp. We've also found ourselves another potential 2-2 base settle here, which would be really nice. We'll carry on scouting with this guy. Okay, so what do you want to build first in your cap? Either 
it's going to be one of two things. It's either going to be a monument or a builder. Monument is going to help you more, but sometimes you are going to need a builder. And again, like we discussed earlier, T2s are the magic number. Uh, do we need to buy any T2s here? No, because we've settled next to one. So I think what we can do here is we can we can go for a monument here. Builder's also nice, again, because of the horses, uh, maybe some cattle if you want the housing, the stone if you want another T2. Um, but cause, I think because we've settled on, on a 2-2 two -two base here, we, the, the monument's going to finish relatively quick. We're probably going to grow into the horses so we can choose between either working heavy production or, or heavy food there as we see fit. Uh, we've got this warrior here that we've bought, so we'll start sort of head, heading towards where we want to settle with that guy. And we'll carry on scouting with you. Uh, we've got a couple of options here. What you, If you're thinking of and you've discussed setting up a potential alliance with your neighbour and I know it's early early doors at the moment but establishing uh, potential allies early on in the game is great because you start like sending trade routes to them start setting up rainer cities which we'll discuss later on but if you so you need to bear in mind if you do want to send the trade route to them you, you do need vision of their city center so we'll, we'll 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 grab that now. No, we don't want that. That's the positive aspect. Of okay, we'll send our settler towards here first. This is this isn't ideal. Uh, six tiles away, settling on the on the sort of seventh movement isn't great. But this is going to be a really nice city. It's also going to give both of these settles more tiles to work because a, a big problem of that I do um, especially is I settle like min distance cities to try and because in your head you're thinking the, the sooner I settle the, the quicker I'm going to be working these tiles so the production is going to uh, snowball which is a huge thing in, in multiplayer Civ, but it does sort of bite you back in the game later on when you start running out of tiles to work in your cities when you're sort of pop 13, 14 so I think going to this stone is fine. Carry on scouting with you. Try and get the max distance as possible when you're scouting as usual. Um, nothing of interest here. There's no red on the settler lands except for the tiles that are obviously always going to be red. We'll get vision of you. Okay, so we've done our double scout, double settler opening that we've talked about. And we've got some options now. Do we want to go for another settler? Do we want to go for a monument? Trader? Do we need units? Blah, blah, blah. We just get a bit more vision with him as we're discussing that. So the things you want to be looking at building at this stage is, and first thoughts for you guys are probably going to be, let's just do another settler. Let's get more cities down. But we're on our way to early empire here. And early empire... Uh, unlocks the colonization card which is 50 percent production towards settlers because every time you build a settler it's going to increase the cost by 15 off the top of my head and that's going to add up very quickly this also counts for builders and other sort of civilian units doesn't doesn't work for military units though thank god so we're on our way to early empire where we're going to get 50 percent production towards settlers so this is a sort of window now where you can work on a monument to help your culture. The, the monument's obviously going to get get you to early empire quicker. Trader is quite nice as well. I like to do trader if my land isn't very good. It's just going to give you that little bit of extra food and production for your expands. Um, any any units you might need if there's barbs barb camps close as well helps. So we, we are going to go for a monument here because uh, we've got really nice tiles in our cities and we don't want to be um, wasting our production on units that we're not going to be using just have a quick look around with the tiles again as we can see here switching off the ivory onto the 2-2 keeps the monument at three turns but lets us grow a little bit quicker so we can be working more tiles sooner uh, we've scouted with you we've scouted with you and we've got a policy unlock uh, is there anything to do here no we're not at 12 phase so we do still need this god king in um, if you do meet like um, a religious CS, first meet, so you're getting that one faith. Uh, can we have a quick look in the Civilopedia here for a particular city-state? So yeah, uh, when you first meet a city-state, 
you're the first player to meet it in a free for all. It doesn't work in team as don't know why. But in uh, free for all, you, you gain a free envoy in that city state. So the Faith CS is going to give you uh, a, a plus one faith in the capital city and every shrine. So if you do get a, f a first meet on a Faith CS, you can take Guard King out and replace it with Urban Planning. Um, but we haven't got one, so we're not going to do that. We've also increased our trade capacity so we can build a trader when we need to, if we need to. And that's the sound of barbarians. Do do sort of take a look where, where they spawn. Um, if you've got any sort of units close to send towards them. Uh, we've got vision on Indo, so let's carry on scouting. Big mistake I just made there. I could have gone to this tile, but for some reason I'm kind of stupid and took the uh, other way around. When you're not at war with people, uh, your scouts can move through their units. So I started here and I could have gone one, two, three like that through his unit. But uh, for some reason, I decided to go over the hill first. Carry on scouting with you. That's fine. Send the settler towards there. Um, escort if you like. Go forward a tile if you like to get some extra vision. Uh, we still need to find that barb camp. We've found ourselves a goodie hut too, which is nice. And we'll move on to the next turn. Just try and power through these turns where there isn't sort of much going on. Apparently we're stuck at the moment. Okay, there we go. Let's keep heading towards you. You can go and grab the goodie hut. We'll scout with you. Oh, hello. Here we go again. So here we go. Uh, using that lens, we've, we've found someone again. We've got some greenish, brownish borders there. You can zoom in and try and have a little guess of who it is. Uh, there's desert there, so I think that's Marley, to be honest. What you can do in these situations is if, if you're sort of worried about being neighbours with a, a very early aggressor like Macedon, Rome, um, Scythia, for example, if you do get to a sort of position here where you haven't actually met the board, the player of the board, as you can see, and you don't want them to find you, you can, you can just sort of go back the other way if you want to, to avoid meeting them. Because if, if they see you, they might think, oh, let's go and have a crack at him. But it's Marley, we're not worried about him, so we'll go and find him. You're also just sitting there waiting for that. Carry on scouting with you. On to next turn again. No, no, goodbye. Okay, we've got the early Empire boost here now. Which is nice, so we've got three more turns now. So, three more turns until we want to be building another Saddler like, with the card like we just mentioned. So we've done our monument. We can do a trader in two turns. We can also do a builder in two turns. A builder is slightly more production than a than a trader, but we can still do them in the same amount of turns. So we might as well do that. Get these horses going, like mentioned. See if we can grow off you. Absolutely not. We've grown in this city as well, so we want to sort of have a look at what tile we're working. Um, we could look at buying this horse now because 11 tiles to grow on a two pop city isn't great um, but again we want this monument done so we can check here now by comparing these two tiles with each other these both have got one production so we can see by going on here how many turns more it's going to be um, in this position I think it's fine to to buy this we, the, the monument goes up a turn but we're going to be growing a lot lot sooner for four turns instead of 11 grab that goodie hat governor tile wow now that is a mega high roll ah, i don't really want to use that for the sake of the guide i, I kind of want to wait till we're at early empire so i think i'm just going to sort of leave that as it is but that's a that's a very very nice um goodie hat to have we can see here there's going to be a city here i'm guessing this might be a city state considering there's a player up here but we'll see um, we're not really interested in Mali at the moment, so we're going to scout the other way to see if he's missed any potential goodie hurts. Some players like to scout cities to see like what, what's going on, what they've improved, whether they've got horses and, and, and that sort of thing. Uh, but I like to scout around their lands because for all I know, they could have sent absolutely nothing in this direction and we might be able to find ourselves some goodie hurts. Carry on scouting with you. 
That's fine. Nothing interesting going on there. Wish I could turn these deals off, but I can't. Let's see what this is. Okay, we can again we can zoom in and have a look. We can see that the the borders are only a single line, so we know that that's going to be a city state and that's a white city state. Like that run away from these barbs. Lucky Marley over here has got a desert storm. Always nice to see. Okay, so I just mentioned things like whether your enemy's got horses or not. And what you can do is you can use this global resource button here to see um, what sort of civs have got what strategics and luxuries online, which is super handy for knowing um, like what, what your allies and or even enemies have, have got improved. Nothing at the moment though, no one's got any horses improved. Moving on to next turn, let's get that uh, horse done as soon as possible. Obviously that's going to give that an extra production, which is nice. And I feel like I've just kind of rushed into that tile improvement without really discussing it. Uh, the main reason that, that I did improve the horse is because improving a pasture gives you an extra production. You can search for um, you can search for every sort of tile improvement in the Civilpedia to see what it gives, what it's going to give you. Unlocks the builder ability to construct pastures plus one production. Can only be built on valid resources. Also gives you half a housing and uh, more bonuses as the game goes on. 0.5 housing means you do need to do two of those improvements to get one. You, you don't get half a housing, if that makes sense. And other, other sort of tiles we need to start thinking about what we want to improve. Hills are always a good one. Production is king. You want to get that production rolling. Farms are handy if you've got some um, irrigation tiles that you need improving, plantations, that sort of thing. Over here, for example, we're, we're going to need irrigation to improve these cocoa uh, and the spices too. Irrigation needs to farm a resource boost, so building a farm improvement is going to help. bit misleading this tooltip, to be honest. Where it says farm improvement, you might think, okay, I'll just stick a farm on one of these flat tiles. But no, it does need to be um, a sort of farm bonus resource, so uh, rice, wheat, for example. Uh, luxuries are also a good thing to improve because you get the added bonus from happiness. We're not going to really talk about that at the moment. Uh, it's a bit early for that. Carry on scouting with you. Okay, so what do we want to do now? This is another thing we need to talk about. Production rollover. Bit of a little bit of a complicated one. Um, for the sake of this video, I'm going to keep it very basic and I'm not going to talk about overflow. Um, but what you can do is you can choose not to build anything for one turn, like I'm going to do now, and save all your production for next turn. Because here, we're unlocking early empire next turn, which means we're going to do a settler with the 50% production towards settlers. So we're making 13 a turn, that's going to be 6.5 uh, production towards settlers with the card. But if we started to build a settler now, um, we're, we're not going to get that added bonus. So we'll save our production next turn, put the card in, and then choose to build it. Hopefully I've explained that well in a, in a very brief matter. Um, oh, Barb Camp there. Okay, Candy, first meet. Uh, City-state meeting bonus is the first major civilization to meet Candy. You've earned one envoy. Uh, that would have been very uh, handy earlier on in the game, but that's that. So... You might be thinking now, okay, I can't click next turn because the city wants me to choose production, but in multiplayer, you just let the timer run down. You can also hold shift and push enter. That also works. We'll carry on scouting with you. Make sure I've finished everything before I do shift enter. Yes, there we go. Let's move on. Okay, there we go. We've unlocked our policy switch. Just in time, actually, because... Um, We've got that 12 faith as well. You need to bear that in mind. You should have 12 faith by the time you get to early empire. If not, something's probably gone wrong. So we're going to switch now to colonization. 50% production towards settlers. Stick that in. Uh, we've got a bit of a problem down here with any with some potential barbarians. 
and we've just finished a monument here as well so we, we could we could also do a satellite here if we want to uh if we are going to do that we're going to be well we'll keep that we'll get the growth for next turn but more importantly the cap we will improve the farm for the irrigation boost there we go settle this city and with this warrior we're obviously going to go and deal with this barb camp okay so what do we want to do about this barb here now we could go for the greedy play and go for the settler here um if we had any units nearby we we could use them and, and bring them back we might have had enough turns but i think because we've got no vision down here it's probably a safe bet to uh, to build a warrior here what do you want to do next as our civic? Like we discussed earlier, we do want to head towards political philosophy, so we'll go craftsman next. Uh, three turns for craftsman, that's that's quite nice actually. We could, um, we've got one charge in our builder and the boost is to improve three tiles. So we've got a bit of a um, predicament here at the moment because um, we could either improve this camp, which isn't, pardon me which isn't really great to be doing we'd rather improve that looks but for the sake of the boost i think we're, we are going to be doing that okay we'll build a monument there and we've also unlocked our first governor and this is going to be the last thing i'm discussing in this video because we again we're reaching that half an hour stage and i don't want to bore you guys to death okay so we've got our first governor and we've got a lot to choose from but i'm going to make this very very simple for you guys and say that 90% of your games you're going to be doing the same governors in a particular order and Moksha is going to be your first governor. The mod does change these governors so make sure you do read through them. The biggest change is that Pingala doesn't have the culture um, wrapped into its, its uh, initial bonuses. Um, it, the culture is actually split to moksha and that's the reason we're going to be going for him the early culture is better than the early science so we're going to go moksha we're going to stick that in the capital city because that's probably going to be our fastest growing city so we're going to be getting more culture from that um, so there we go if you're feeling a little bit confident you can go so there's, there's, there's two sort of orders you can go of governors one is you go um, Moksha with Connoisseur promotion and then you don't do any more promotions into that and then you go Pingala with the science promotion in your second biggest city and then you then you can go from there. Another option because internal trade routes are very strong is you can put Moksha in your first expand in this case uh, for us this would be this one and then later on put Magnus in in the capital with Gov Plaza in the capital and send internal traders to there. Bit little bit complicated for this video, so I don't think I'm gonna go into that. I'll probably do that in another video. So for the case of simplicity, we'll go Moksha first. Let's finish our turn. We've got some a lot of red tiles here and we can also see these red borders. So we'll meet that city state. Another first meet. Very nice indeed. Carry on scouting up there. Carry on scouting with you. Another goodie hat. Nice, nice, nice. That's what we like to see. We're doing a warrior there. We're growing. We could shift this production over to um, get the warrior out a bit quicker, but uh, growing first, we, we're going to be able to probably do it in the same amount of turns anyway. Again, I'm not clicking the next governor because uh, we got that one for free, so we're kind of cheating there. So we do. Money. We've finished this turn. We've discussed governors. Um, a little bit less info in this video, a little bit of sort of powering through the turns, but that's kind of how the early game goes. Uh, we, we discussed the, the settler lands a bit more, which um, which I did want to do. We talked about settling cities, um, any sort of discussed first meets and uh, governors, so I'm quite happy with that. Hope you enjoyed the video, guys. Let me know what you think in the comments below, whether that be good or bad. I appreciate any sort of criticism. Thanks again for watching. Again, please subscribe on my YouTube, follow me on Twitch, and I shall see you in part three soon, I promise.